On behalf of International Institute of Hemonology, I welcome to all in second edition of our new Human Conversation season. I am Javeria Asad, mechanical engineer, social entrepreneur, writer, journalist, community builder, toastmaster, and above all, the student of optimism coaching offered by International Institute of Hemonology. I am going to conduct today's session and I'm so excited and thrilled for moderating today's session. Human Conversation is a monthly panel of experts organized by the International Institute of Hemonology to approach human topics from different perspectives and share views and opinions with our audience. And today's topic session is very important and very interesting, which is the role of leadership in today's world. And we are very fortunate to have very knowledgeable experts today in our panel will approach the role of leadership in today's world from three different perspectives that promise to offer us a very interest, interesting exchange of ideas and opinions. Ms. Marina Tomawa, she's a president of Change Maker for All and Peace Activist from Netherlands. Mr. Thomas Nath is joining us from Switzerland. He's a coach mediator, author, and expert in leadership training. And Ms. Jessica J. Lockhart, she's joining us from Switzerland, hemonologist, author, multi-award speaker, and director of International Institute of Hemonology. Ladies and gentlemen, effective leadership enables followers to succeed. It sets direction, builds a vision, and adapt as circumstances require. Leadership is all about mapping out where you need to go to win as a team or an organization. It's dynamic, exciting, and inspiring. Leaders cannot achieve their vision without other people's contribution. It's a leader ability to motivate and collaborate with people that helps them to deliver that vision. So that was a little talk from my side, my opinion. But let's hear the opinion and ideas about leadership role in the society from our experts. So I will start from Ms. Marina Tomawa. She's a leader working with change maker for all bringing side by side communities with people who are affected. In 1991, she began to volunteer for refugees with Bosnia, helping with clothes, food, until they she is working voluntarily as humanitarian. humanitarian. Stylist, teacher, mentor, motor driver, motoring member of motor club, rare birth, under the president of motorcycle club, active in large capacity motorcycle competitions, motorcycle rallies. And she's a president of NGO Change Maker. And main and the most important, she is a mom of seven years old boy. Welcome, Marina. How are you? Thank you. It's a pleasure and honor to be here. Um, yeah, um, I'm uh, I'm fine. I'm in Macedonia actually, and yes, uh, I just uh, yes. uh, read the chat. Yes, um, you're from um, originally you're from uh, Macedonia, but living in Netherlands. Uh, I was living in Netherlands for 16 years, but I'm back in Macedonia since now is the fifth year. Yes. I was living from 2002 in the Netherlands. So our uh, NGO is registered as uh, Macedonian Dutch because uh, Saskia is also one of the co-founders, Saskia Harkema, uh, uh, Jessica knows her uh, well. Uh, so yeah, um, as you just uh, mentioned right now, um, I'm, I'm born and raised in um, agriculture family generations before. So uh, we were working hard, very small since kids uh, with my sister. And then, as you mentioned, in the uh, war in Yugoslavia, I was uh, helping refugees. I was still, I don't know, uh, like 12, 12, 13. And um, later I kept on doing the same thing actually in Holland. And I was teaching also uh, um, 
um, mostly women from uh, war zones. Uh, and when I back uh, when I get back in Macedonia with uh, with my son, uh, then I started the NGO, uh, the Change Makers, uh, Change Makers for All, because um, it was sad to see uh, during the years how things change negatively, and people are leaving the country. And at that time, actually, uh, I came back, and. Uh, yeah, so um, that's a bit of the introducement um, of myself. And I don't know what Jessica said. If we talk too long, just cut us off. Okay. <laughs> or, um, yeah, about um, if I can say from Bosnia was a woman um, with all the refugees at that time. She was living here for years, and um, after she left in Bosnia, when the war was over, and uh, two years ago, I think, my mom, she called me, and she said, someone wants to see you, but I thought, like, like always, somebody's coming for to visit, and then she called me, somebody wants to see me. When I went, it was uh, Gordana is her name. And she came here for a week after 20 years and to stay just one week. And the first day she came to visit me and she hugged me, we cried, we laughed. She said, I just came to say thank you for everything. What, uh, so even now I get emotional about that. So that's um, how I started, but my uh, grand-grandfather was also volunteer so yeah maybe it's uh, sometimes in the genes huh? yeah uh can i go further yes please it okay was a new background now i just want to take your opinions about the importance of role of leadership of course uh, within yeah. the community overall yeah about um uh, leadership. Uh, Macedonia is a country who is it's a very very old country. Even um, I heard that in Holland a lot of times. Uh, that is that they mention also as Macedonia. We have also two names uh, according what everything what is happening. Uh, but um, Macedonia in the time from in Yugoslavia when we were part of Yugoslavia was very different life. Well, now in three decades, um, not a lot of things are changed. Actually, it's going, um, yeah, I can say bad because people are uh, leaving the country. They're going to European Union uh, countries for better life. So uh, they're leaving the country massively. And uh, everybody was saying when I wanted to start the NGO, um, because it was... Um, aware choice and decision because um, here if you uh, if you uh, get our people from different um, uh, political parties members let's say normally you have some class and things and, and I thought let's make an NGO with different uh, with people who are members of different political parties and people who are not uh, who don't want to uh, think or hear about politics, let's gather together to have uh, one same goal and to be example that we can work together great. So we are working now for fifth year and uh, everything is voluntarily. And um, we are just, yeah, um, we are working on positive changes, actually connecting uh, people in the municipality. We solving also uh, yeah, significant problems uh, that affect a larger part of residents in the country. We are working also, as I said, raising the awareness um, among the citizens and uh, responsible, the responsibilities uh, yeah, of the authorities before uh, the citizens. And um, we are registered uh, in um, more sectors, but our uh, main focus is uh, protection of the environment. Um, 
uh, human rights, uh, freedom of speech, and uh, and so on. A humanitarian work that's also, yeah, almost daily actually what we work, and um, it's um, it's difficult because um, actually we are. Um, um, very good example, what I'm very proud of. Uh, but sometimes you are kind of, uh, I, I don't know how can I say it, uh, like a threshold or kind of obstacle when something needs to happen and then we stand on the way <laughs> actually because it's, let's say, if it's about environment or something like that. So um, it's a big challenge because um, yeah, uh, we, we brought also a lot of changes because uh, we're connect, connecting people. We're working uh, with uh, a local central government if it's needed and, and so on. Uh, but um, still, yeah, there are things which um, are just not okay. Maybe we, we will speak later if it's, uh, if it's time. And um, yeah, as leader together with the change makers, because um, I have all group behind me and um, we are just bringing yeah, side by side the communities with people who are effect affected, it depends from yeah, what and um, yeah, where freedom is threatened, uh, live and hold of, of, of the planet and uh, our children and we personal sacrifice fighting daily battle to safeguard our human rights, justice, equality. So, yeah. Uh, yes, Marina, thank you so much. And I feel if I, you know, conclude your overall talk that uh, definitely leaders are the trendsetters, as you mentioned that you started NGO uh, and you follow the step of your uh, grandfather. So they take some, you know, the, the, the genuine leaders take some extraordinary steps uh, to bring us some powerful and positive change within the communities and with the vision, as you mentioned, working together and growing together. So wonderful, wonderful thoughts shared by you. Thank you so much. We will come to uh, you again in the panel discussion. Now moving towards our uh, second uh, expert, Mr. Thomas, before I invite him uh, formally, let me share his profound profile with you guys. Thomas Nast is the owner of Nast Leadership an author and co-author of the book Leader, Team, and Partner for a Sustainable Economy. He founded his own marketing agency, was head of the presenter team and journalist BR at Radio Extra Burn, was a lecturer for many years at the Private University of Applied Sciences and Economics and at the University of Applied Sciences and Agriculture, Forestry and Food, and was involved in the ETH Alumni Career Services in Zurich. He is a member of the advisory board of LP3 AG. He currently works as an independent leadership trainer, coach, and mediator. He is the father of a grown-up son and a daughter. Uh, welcome, Mr. Thomas. So now it's a pleasure, huh? Oh, wow, what so, a multi-dimensional profile, Mr. Thomas. Great. <laughs> so thank you for uh, being part of this uh, conversation. Um, I actually re represent probably the business part of leadership. And that's okay. Uh, I normally start my, my trainings uh, like this. Uh, employees do not leave because of the company, be, uh, but because uh, of the leaders and managers. And the same, I also can say, people don't leave their countries because of the country. They leave the countries because of, of their leaders. So now we're already in the role of leadership in today's world. Um, we asked till now about 30,000 people, what is a good leader? And uh, with that, we established a model called LP3, uh, means leadership P of three. Uh, uh, I come later back on that. And the main, um, the main thing a leader should actually Face is self-reflection. And self-reflection is a rather spare good in this world, I, I sometimes think. Um, we, or I work with uh, three main questions. The first one is, do I know myself? 
do I know myself in terms of leadership? Do I know myself in terms of being present? Do I know myself in terms of how good is my conversation? Do the people understand me? This is maybe a bit difficult because I'm out of training in English right now. Probably at the end of my speech, it's, it's better again. Uh, the second question uh, is, do I listen to myself? So if I start with the first question, do I know myself? Uh, and there is maybe a smoker and he will find out, okay, smoking is maybe not the best thing in the world I can do for myself. Uh, the second question, do I listen to myself, should actually bring him down to the bottom and maybe it gives him the reason to stop. It gives him the reason to change the, change the perspective. It gives him the reason for a motivation uh, to change his behavior. And then the third question, do I like myself, can be answered easily. Yes, I stopped smoking. Yes, I don't drink too much. Yes, I'm in a good shape with my body and so on. And these three questions first, I had a look on it a bit like, what the hell is that? And till now, for me, these three questions are magic. Uh, because if, they, if, if I turn them on all different topics, it gives me... Um, a nice mindset. Uh, and what I think is what leadership needs today is a better mindset. So uh, that's my goal and that's my uh, vision, you know, to work with as many people uh, who are concerned, who are in a, in a, in a good position uh, from team leader to CEO, um, that they can have the possibility to change their mindset and to really understand what leadership is. Uh, another person, this is a called uh, a wife called Brandes. Uh, she said once, the hard currency of digitalization is the soft skills. And the role of leadership in today's world is actually be more aware about your soft skills, be more empathic, uh, take care, look not only at yourself, look at your surrounding, at your family in the small world, yeah, at your uh, place where you live, with the people you're surrounded. And uh, if, if you change your mindset and it gets normal, um, yes, then I really think uh, I'm on the way to do my job to maybe create a better world, uh, a little bit or even a bit big, because if I work with CEOs, if I work with uh, uh, high potentials, uh, they have an influence on other people again. And if they give their thoughts about a different mindset to their employees, um, I really have the impression that at the end of a, of a workshop, at the end of a seminar, that I did something well, you know, in the, on, on, the, on the art of on possibilities that I have. I can't change the world, but I can change people, or I can lead the people to change themselves. Yup, huh? that's actually uh, my topic about uh, the role of leadership in today's world. Uh, leadership is unbelievably important, but it's, the question is what kind of leadership? Yes, it's, it's very important to know what kind of leadership style you are going to adopt to bring the change, the massive change around you, whether it's, it's, it's any organization, business organization, or the volunteer organization. And it's very important, as you mentioned in the question one, that know yourself, what are your strengths and how you can serve the community. Exactly. Um, yes. Yeah, exactly. Uh, maybe, Jessica, I have a, a slide. And I don't can, um, because I'm only on the handy right now, maybe you can uh, show it. Uh, this just shows, you know, what I mean with a, with a new yeah. mindset for leadership. So a person, a leader, uh, female or male, should have a clear vision where he wants to go. Uh, uh, he should be aware of his values, about, uh, but also about the values of his surrounding. And they should fit somehow. Mm -hmm. uh, then he should be an example. You can't drink... Uh, we can't say don't drink wine huh? and, you, and you drink wine. That's not possible. A leader should be present, huh? should be aware. But you can't be aware all the time. 
So you should be aware in three situations. When when it burns, you have to be a you, you have to go and you have to be there physically. In a talk, you have to be aware mentally. And sometimes please protect your people. Then you are a Schutzengel. I don't know the word in English actually. Maybe you know Jessica. Huh? Then the the main thing uh, normally people uh, about, understand about leadership is uh, leading people, developing people. But that's only uh, one part of ten. Then the communication is clear. My actually my attitude to normal thing about communication is uh, normal is we don't understand each other. So please take care and uh, be clear. Uh, justice. Uh, I found out people don't have any feeling for being justice, injustice. Uh, they just realize when there is no justice. Then uh, being, uh, you, you should know your hard skills, plus as well your soft skills. Uh, this is on the same level, hard skills, knowing your hard skills and uh, your soft skills as well and please be well organized mainly in your life because there is only one life you can live and in the middle you know you have the self-reflection self-reflection means to reflect all these dimensions leadership dimensions and be honest with you maybe you have to learn a bit more because leadership is a way uh, it's a goal you have to walk the way all through that's it thank you Thank you so much. I really like this, this presentation. The very comprehensive picture, defining the all different perspective of a good leader, actually. And as you mentioned in the Thank one you. point, that leader should protect their people. Yeah, that, that leader should believe on we, us, and are, not on uh, I, me, and myself kind of things. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Leader should accept the failures or success together. So, and, and the self-reflection, uh, and there are multiple types of uh, leadership, actually, but I personally, I like the transformational leadership where you you, you turn your uh, followers into a leaders. You work on them in a way. Oh, you know, every, every of your follower is, is, you know, reflecting your persona. This is kind exactly. of... Exactly. You, you, can't, you can't make out of a people without any talent in leadership. You can't exactly. make a good leader but you, you can turn it a bit better. And you need to know about your what, what your follower is good at. You have to enhance his strength. You Definitely. should know your potential and you should, you know, also, you know, understand the potential of your, uh, of your followers. Exactly. And you have to polish as a leader to support them. Exactly. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. That, that was yeah. wonderful. Thank okay, you. so uh, after this comprehensive and very brief, uh, but very um, uh, prominent, this, uh, I, I really personally like it. Um, now moving towards our third and last uh, panelist, expert, none other than Jessica J. Lockhart. She created humanology based on the theoretical, academic, and personal logic and knowledge. She had accumulated linguist, coach, teacher, mentor, international speaker, and author of several books, The Optimist in You, What Story Do You Tell Yourself, Coaching for You, and Karibu. Uh, Jessica directs the International Institute of Hemonology with the twin seats in Switzerland and Panama, and continues developing and propagating this new discipline all around the world. Creator and developer of hemonology, optimism coaching, personal lessons, absolute forgiveness, social math, and time boxes. To mention, but a few. Her discoveries and breakthroughs are opening new avenues of research and knowledge and helping human beings understand themselves and the world around them better. So I think uh, Jessica is going to uh, elaborate this topic under the banner of humanology, of course, because leadership means human beings, the relation between the human beings. So next 15 minutes, stage is yours. Thank you so much, Javeria. I'm really thrilled to be here today with such experts from different corners of the world, because at the end of the day, we're all human beings, aren't we? And what we are commenting and sharing applies to everybody. Let me share uh, some of my uh, slides with you. As you know, I usually like to share slides because, well, you see me all the time on shows and on events, so I think it's more interesting to see the slides than my face. 
Today we're talking about the role of leadership in today's world and I wanted to take a little uh, different approach from what we've been hearing so far tonight. So what I want to start with is asking ourselves what we're talking about. Because to lead, which is the verb that has to do with the leadership, to lead means to guide or to be at the head of some other people of somebody who's trying to do something else. It also means to direct. So if we're talking about leadership, we're actually talking about helping other people get places, we're helping other people do things. But when we talk about leadership, we realize that, well, there aren't that many good leaders in the world that are there. Leadership is very, very, very widespread in the entrepreneurial world, in the world of companies that uh, Thomas was just talking to, just referring to. It is also quite common in the world of politics that Marina mentioned today. Uh, but I think that leadership should be more widely used and more extensive all over the world. I think that leaders are really needed today everywhere. We should have better leaders in companies. We need leaders in schools. You know, teachers are leaders. Uh, headmasters are leaders. Some students are leader as well, leaders as well. We need leaders at home, parents, mothers and fathers, or mothers and fathers that uh, educate their children and guide them and teach them so they can do what they want to do. In any type of group, we need leaders so that the group doesn't dismantle or dismembrate. And we also need leaders in countries, like Marina was saying. We need people telling the country where to go and how to get there. But the truth is that although we need leaders everywhere, leaders are very much necessary. There aren't that many of them. And there are specific fields and niches where we don't have enough leaders. I think that with the current world situation, for example, in the political sphere, we are seeing a very important lack of leaders. We are living situations in the world today that are proving to us that we are in their need, in dire need for more and better leaders. What's happening in many different uh, parts of the world, like for example now with this horrible, horrible earthquake, we don't have enough leaders leading the way and helping human beings be safe and be healthy. We need leaders in companies, true, but there's something else. It's not just a matter of having leaders, is it? Oops, sorry about that. It's a matter of having leaders who know how to lead. We have a huge need for leaders, but we are never taught how to lead. Unless you are working in companies and you do a master's degree on something, you might never be taught how to lead, how to become a leader, how to guide, how to direct others. That's why we find that many leaders in many different fields in the world are very poor at leading others because they don't know how to do it. They were never taught how to do it. And we're never born knowing, are we? It's important that we start realizing that leaders also need training, which is something that many leaders themselves don't realize they need. Effective leaders, for example, need quite a few skills. They need extensive training. They need a variety of skills so they can lead everybody and not just imitate the leaders they had in their previous years or in their youth. Most current leaders lead by imitating their own leaders, the people who taught them, the people they learned from. Okay, that's one way to learn, but is that the best way? Well, Maybe not. Maybe when we only use the skills that we have learned from the people who taught us, we only can learn those because the person who taught us only had one limited set of skills. That is why it's so important that we realize that leaders need a wide variety of skills. They need communication skills. 
They need to learn how to communicate, but also how to listen, how to use many different styles of communication, how to listen actively and passively. They need empathy, initiative, creativity, flexibility. They need a wide variety. I cannot list all the skills they need because that list would be very, 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 very long just to be effective leaders. Any good leader trying to lead others has to know themselves, as Thomas just told us. But the leader also needs to know the people he or she is leading. Because if I want to lead others, and I know myself very well, but I don't know the people I'm trying to lead, I'd be very poor at that too. Sorry, Thomas, I agree with the part you presented, but I think we have to add that we need to understand and know the people we're leading because as I will be explaining right now, there are different needs for different people. It is true that there are certain uh, leading styles that have been explained by the literature, that are taught in schools when you want to become a leader, and that are somehow defined by their characteristics. Some of the most common ones are the four that you can see on the slide right now. The autocratic one, well, that is, a, a type of style that was used mainly in the past, very authoritarian, very um, uh, controlling, and uh, not very good for people who don't like to be told what to do all the time. It is very, very good for emergency situations. For example, we just saw the earthquake in Syria and Turkey, well, this type of leadership could be great for directing, you know, the, the help that was needed just on the spot. But maybe not that good for people who need to have their own uh, space and time to really go about their own things. Another one is the, what we call the orientational or laissez-faire type of leadership that doesn't exercise too much pressure. It lets employees or collaborators develop themselves, but it's not very good for people who need specific instructions and orders and commands. You know, if your style is only orientational and you just give some orientations, those who need very precise instructions, very structured information will fail and they will feel like they are the ones failing when in reality, you as a leader are the one who's failing. There's what we call the democratic or party, party, well, I'll say participative type of style, which is uh, very much focused on communication, on uh, how to do things in a very collaborative way, but the leader has the final word. Well, employees feel like they're really collaborating and participating, but sometimes it can be very much time consuming. It can be very slow because everybody needs to feel like they're involved. And then the last one that uh, Javeri already mentioned that I included on the slide tonight is what we call the transformational or coach type of coaching type of uh, leading style that is really, really focused on communication, uh, collaboration, and it's done by helping the people who are being led develop themselves, get to know themselves and progress themselves. It can lead to a fantastic feeling of shared project, but they can also, again, be not that effective in situations in which there's a certain urgency or, or emergency. So as you can see, Every leading style is good for certain things, but maybe not that good for other things. That is why leadership should vary depending on the circumstances. What is it that we're trying to get to? Who am I and who are the people that I am trying to lead? Unless I base my decisions and my leading style on those two premises, who am I and who is the person I'm trying to lead, my leading will very likely be um, not fully perfect, not excellent. I always therefore tell leaders who want to be trained that one leadership style is never enough. We cannot just use one style to lead everybody because we're doomed to fail with 
60% of those who are, we're trying to lead. We are all different human beings. What works for some doesn't work for others. And what worked for me doesn't necessarily work for others either, even if it was fantastic for me. That's why we have to tell our leaders that they have to be trained in many different leadership styles if they want to help everybody they're going to be working with. So that's number two. The world not only needs a lot of leaders, but it needs prepared leaders. Leaders who really know what they're doing, what they're doing. Leaders who really know how to work with different kinds of people in different circumstances and with different methodologies. The most common roles that leaders acquire are the ones that we're very, very used to. Teachers, a lot of leaders become teachers and they teach others how to do things. They tell them exactly what they have to do. They give them the instructions and explain everything. And then they let them do things like a teacher would let pupils do things. And then they come back and they correct whatever the pupil, in this case, the person who was being led, didn't do properly. That's one of the roles that a leader can acquire. Another one, and it's very, very uh, common and very used nowadays, is mentorship. You know, mentoring others, telling them what to do based on our own experience. Well, I already did that. This is how I do, did it. And you can use the same steps I used so you can do it too. Well, that can help certain people as well. And the third one that is very common today is coaching. Okay, I'm going to explore things with you. I'm going to help you find your own answers. We're going to analyze things together to come up with our own way. These are the most common roles that uh, leaders undertake, but there's much more to being a leader than that. Leadership has been historically linked to or focused on success, gains, goals, objectives. It's something really instrumental. Leadership is usually about getting people places and getting people to reach their objectives. So it's a, usually a very structured way in which we help people achieve things. It is historically therefore been very much used in the entrepreneurial world, in the world of companies, where uh, leadership was very much uh, uh, at the same level as success or uh, material, material gains. It's very much linked. It's like a whole concept that leadership was attached to. But leadership is not just about companies money and material things, is it? It has been linked to it, but there is, as I was saying, much more to be said about leadership. The world is changing. We see the younger generations, for example, rejecting the old styles of leadership. We see that the younger generations, and I'm generalizing now, of course, are more pro the environment. They're against certain a certain materialistic worldview. They want to be more uh, on the softer side of things. We see that a lot of people are questioning, uh, for example, capitalism. And with this world change, we need to change our leadership as well, because the people we're trying to lead have different opinions and have different points of view. It is therefore very, very important that we realize that leaders today not only need to reach goals and objectives and to help people achieve their materi material uh, uh, goals, but leaders need to inspire. We have to create visions, we have to create dreams, and we have to help those who, whom we are leading achieve and get those goals and create their own dreams. We have to inspire them and be more than just mere teachers, mentors, or coaches. A true leader 
should be the one that truly inspires others. The number three uh, tonight is therefore that we also need not only a lot of leaders, prepared leaders, but we need human leaders who understand the peculiarities of each of the human beings they're working with and their own peculiarities. Because as I said before, we're all different human beings with our own characteristics, our own desires, our own needs, our own fears, and all that has to be taken into consideration. Leadership is not just for professional leaders. Marina was commenting on it. She said, well, we have politicians who are leaders, but we also have farmers who are leaders. We also have young people who are leaders and they are uh, collaborating together to reach certain specific set goals. Well, unfortunately, a lot of people think that only professionals can be leaders and they are afraid of even considering the possibility of them becoming leaders, which is really sad because the truth is that every person can and should be a leader. Leadership is something personal. Leadership is based on, rooted down on whom we are. And it is personal, not just for the person who's doing the leading, but also for the person who is following or being led. Because leadership, as Thomas just told us today, is a journey. And it's a journey of growth. It's a journey of development. It's a journey of movement, of progress. And by being a leader or being led, being a follower, we are changed, we are moved. There is, a very interesting book that I wanted to mention tonight, The Leader Who Had No Title, that somehow reflects this point of view a little bit. This is by famous Robin Sharma. And I wanted to mention this book because it explains uh, in a very interesting way, in a very entertaining story at the same time, that we should all be leaders in whatever it is that we do. If you are a bartender, you should try and be the best bartender you could ever be. So you become a leader for anybody else new who's trying to learn. If you are a student, be the best student you can ever be. If you are a conductor like Javeria tonight, be the best conductor you can ever be. Study, learn, acquire new skills, become the best and whatever it is that you're doing, because there will always be other people looking up at you, trying to learn from you. And there might be a time in which you're going to have to teach what you are already doing now to somebody else. And it'd be fantastic if you could have a lot more experience, a lot more knowledge, so you can transfer it. Am I therefore saying that everybody because we're all going to be leaders, should be trained as leaders? Well, maybe a little bit, yes. Because at the end of the day, we are all part of humanity. We are all part of society. And if we want to be in society, if we want to learn from others, we should also be willing to teach others and to disseminate whatever it is that we learn. And if we only disseminate it one way, as we said before, we might not be helping some of the people we're trying to teach. So the fourth idea that I wanted to share with you tonight is that the world actually needs true leaders. We need a lot of leaders who are trained, who are human, and who are actually true. And with this, I will be finishing my presentation tonight. I'll be more than happy to answer any questions you may have later on. But I think now it's the time for Javeria to introduce our panel of experts. Thank you very much for your uh, attention. Opa! Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much for listening to me. I'm Jessica Lockhart, and this is the International Institute of Human Biology. Wow, remarkable. I mean, so much knowledge in just 22 slides. That's, that's amazing. There are some four points that are definitely, and I really like the point that learning never stops, okay? Uh, and whatever, even a smaller role we are doing, we need to do with perfection, uh, focus, 
Uh, for example, in our Toastmasters, there, there are multiple roles when we conduct a meeting from the speaker till the timer. So there are many experienced leaders who even adopt uh, taking the timer role, which is a very smallest role uh, in a Toastmaster, but even they are doing it with so much perfection, so much focus. So it's not what you're doing, it depends how you're doing. So thank you so much, Jessica, for sharing a very, very uh, meaningful and thoughtful um, solutions, actually, I would say, to enhance and improve your leadership styles in a way. Okay, so as mentioned by Jessica, we are moving towards our panel discussion and we already shared the questions with our panelists. So um, I will start with um, our first uh, uh, guest, Marina. Okay, uh, I will ask a question and one by one you can answer the question. My first question for the panel discussion is that what are the fundamental traits that make a person a true leader? Although Jessica has already mentioned in her slide, but I want to, or we want to hear from other speakers, what they think, what are the basic traits of a good leader? Starting from Marina. Um, well, um, this leadership, what I am leading <laughs> here uh, in this country, is uh, because in different countries and in different sectors, in different uh, type of, uh, doesn't matter what kind of uh, leader you are, in different countries you you um, uh, have to deal with different things. So uh, like here, for example, um, it, or everywhere is also about trust. Uh, because if you want to work with group people, they need to trust you. The trust, uh, is also built it during or later, but trust is built it before. That's why they choose you as leader. And uh, uh, yeah, um, it's also, yeah, to dare, to dare to do something what others don't dare to say or to do it and not to be afraid. Um, and um, yeah, and also, uh, to, to connect people in uh, also in good things. What I, uh, what I said, we are here actually uh, as NGO to bring positive changes in the society and in the country, uh, but still we have to uh, deal with, with also very serious things. So it's, um, I'm also, I, I agree with that leader, leaders also should uh, not have more followers, but build also leaders, more leaders. But um, uh, like, yeah, like Jessica said, you have to have that, or, or Thomas said, I guess, you have to, uh, you cannot train that. You have to have it in yourself. Because I, I mentioned, uh, I asked two times, if I can just step off for uh, three till six months, I can always help from a site, but no, <laughs> it's from the NGOs, from the members. And uh, so, um, yeah, it's once again is um, about the, uh, the trust and how much you dare to lead. Yes, as uh, Jessica mentioned, like for in some kind of crisis and emergency, a leader has to take some you know extraordinary decision out of the box, and for that you need a courage. You have to be courageous, and yes. definitely trustworthy leader uh, for his followers. Def definitely, thank you so much. So now moving towards uh, Mr. Thomas with the same question. Uh, please unmute yourself. I'm sorry. <laughs> First, it takes talent to be a leader. And the recipe for human success is cooperation. Mm. So a leader must be able to lead his uh, people uh, to cooperate, to communicate, to help each other, uh, to take care about each other. Uh, what also helps is, uh, is having passion. It's uh, really, you have a vision and you really go for it. Uh, with all the passion you have, this is uh, uh, this shows your people you mean it, 
and you walk, you talk. Uh, you should have the potential. If you have the potential to lead people, uh, if you know your own potential, if you know your strength, if you know your weakness, you know, you have much more power and influence on others. If you have more influence on others, the performance will will be better. The happy other the 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 people work like to work together. So it's it's all about being in a in a in the mood to cooperate and cooperation always needs leadership. If this is missing, huh, it's a real obstacle. Yes, true. That's all I have to say. Good yeah. you mean you mean a good teamwork, right? Oh, definitely. Yeah, yeah. That's why I, I wrote uh, three books, you know. Uh, the first one, leader, means actually the, the leader top down. Uh, but it's also about leadership. Uh, as uh, Jessica said, you, you have to, to be um, capable to change your style of leadership all the time. So the second book is Teams about uh, leadership. This means, you know, how, how a team has to work together. And there, you know, trust is, is very important, but being open is very important as well. They, they belong together. I'm open and so the people trust me. If I'm not open, the people don't trust me. So if I want to have a good team spirit, I need at least these two. And then the, the third book is a partner for a sustainable economy. And this means uh, how to work not only in teams, but from team to team, from company to company, from maybe, you know, country to country. Uh, and this is not in our DNA. Mm. Because I always, if, if I work with groups, you know, and you give a group a goal, uh, in the same minute, it's not a team, it's more like a wolf pack. Uh, they all want to win against the others. Mm. Uh, and this is something really important to teach to people, you know. It's, uh, we are not wolf packs, we should work together. We should cooperate. Exactly. As Michael Jordan mentioned, talent, talent wins game, but teamwork and intelligence win championships. So, yes, true. Oh, thank yeah. you so much. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> okay. Uh, yes, Jessica, what's your take? Although we have uh, elaborated, but... Yeah, well, there's, as I said on the presentation, there's many, many, many skills that mm. a leader uh, should have. But the fundamental ones, apart from the ones that uh, Marina and Thomas mentioned, which I agree, those are some of the fundamental ones, I think also include, and we should never forget it, the capacity to listen. I think that actually listening to what people are telling you and understanding the information and processing the information is key, is fundamental, because sometimes leaders want to lead based on what they know and they think and they believe, not based on what their, their uh, followers are telling them or what their students are telling them or what their collaborators are telling them. Um, I think that flexibility is a fundamental one too, because as COVID taught us recently, we need to be able to leave no matter what. Uh, the world is changing, I said it in my presentation, and we as leaders have to be able to be able to lead our followers under whatever circumstances. And that requires a great amount of flexibility. And the last one that I wanted to mention um, is what I would call authenticity and integrity. If you have a leader whose words you doubt all the time for whatever reason. Sometimes it is because the way the person moves or the way the person speaks makes you doubt what they're saying. And it's not just a matter of trust here, okay? It's more something internal. Uh, you find the person not very authentic or uh, with a lack of integrity. You will just not do what they are telling you to do. You will just not really fully accept what you're being told. If you doubt the person in that sense, you will not follow them. So a leader should try and be as authentic as possible. And 
integrity should be one of their uh, stamps of uh, quality, I would say. So those are the ones that I wanted to add, Javeria. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Uh, now moving to our second question. Um, like as Jessica mentioned in her uh, presentation, there are different kind of uh, different styles of leadership. So now I just want to know that uh, uh, which example of a leader do you admire and why? Because everybody has an inspiration uh, in terms of what you're doing. And we are today talking about a leader. So definitely everybody has inspiration um, in different uh, perspective. So starting from Marina, uh, who inspires you in the leadership role? Um, now I have few. Uh, but I can, I will mention Nelson Mandela mm -hmm. and uh, Josip Broz Tito, uh, who is, um, yeah, Josip Broz Tito was uh, the president, or I can say leader of very different countries. He gathered all the publics together hey. with different um, uh, hey. I'm sorry, uh, with, um, I'm sorry, am I here? Because my phone was ringing. <laughs> Hello? Hi. I cannot hear you. Yes, we can hear you. Yes, you're here. Marina, hello? You're audible, you're audible Marina, please go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, now I I can hear you very uh, bad, but uh, if you hear me, then it's okay. So um, he gathered all these republics and uh, different religions, people from different religions. Uh, we were from Muslims, Catholics, Orthodox, and so on. So he was leading that country decades, uh, even though. Um, he was um, later, people were, um, there were also a lot of uh, talks after his death. But now, after decades since he died, people are more talking about those times. Uh, I think the, the idea of Tito's Yugoslavia was actually the thought what is European Union today. He united all the republics. We were so powerful in um, agriculture, sport, whatever you can imagine. You can go with Yugoslavian passport, whatever you want. You don't need visa because everybody knows you're coming back to your country because everybody had good. You can sleep on the roads and nobody touched you. You are just safe. And uh, there were no poor people. He was, uh, for me, a great leader to lead so many uh, republics. And after his death, death actually you know already uh what happened with the war and so on and uh, now seeing from macedonia now what is happening and all these yeah three decades we 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 just we're just missing good leader and what jessica said you, you cannot just be a leader chosen by some political party but you have to have behind uh, behind yourself whole history well, and why to be chosen as leader? You have to have compassion, you have to feel things. Like the last time with the president of the country, I told him, because I'm working in agri agriculture and it's very hard work. And, um, and I told him, I would like to see, I would like to have, I will write an email to the minister of agriculture. I want him, uh, I will invite him to come and work with me one day and uh, just to see how is it? Because yeah, I cannot show you my hands now on camera, but I don't know how I look, but I know myself, everybody knows what, yeah, what is the, 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 the weight of the work, what you're doing. And I want him to see what is it? Because if you just study it in the university and later you become minister, then but you need to see how, and I wanted also to go with him and to spend one day to see how is he going, how it's like normal working day with him in eight hours time during the week. Uh, 
So uh, actually, I didn't receive any answer. And um, yeah, we we just need uh, great leaders. And also, um, yeah, what I said, uh, I, I began with, um, I, I said about Josip Brostito. Uh, we are also here generations who remember him. I don't know uh, what is now talked, but uh, he is now more famous after his death than when he was alive. And about Nelson Mandela, uh, sometimes I see things I recognize myself actually in certain situations. Okay. Um, what they have been through, and uh, yeah, and maybe again, maybe in another meeting about this. But uh, those <laughs> are two people who really uh i adore them I yeah. yeah yeah and i i really like that point you mentioned that on ground realities are quite different while sitting in the office and doing something uh, field work is is different it has so many challenges and we will we will ask those challenges and uh, problem usually a leader face we will ask in our next question but let me finish the first question uh, second question taking answers from uh, thomas mr thomas who inspires you in a leadership role? Um, actually, there are many inspiring persons, mainly it's people with a, with a vision, uh, with people who have a clear vision where to go to. But I explain it differently. Um, I, came, I, I went back to my youth, uh, although I go back to my youth uh, and uh, maybe explain it like that. Uh, I speak about a person you all don't know. Um, his uh, strength has been uh, really his uh, rhetoric skills. He had charisma, uh, his power of persuasion, his ability to lead people to cooperation. He had a strong vision and he had uh, good strategic uh, skills. And you probably don't uh, know this person I just talked about. Uh, he was an Indian, uh, American native chief from the tribe of the Shawnees. He was called Tecumse. And uh, in these times, we all speak about, if, if you think about natives, we speak uh, uh, about the, the natives in the, on the horses in the prairie, but he was living in the, in the, in the forest. And uh, he had really the ability to surround all kinds of different tribes. And his goal was uh, the Ohio River as a, as a limitation uh, for the white people. Um, and uh, so they would have their own country behind that Ohio. Uh, ultimately, he was unsuccessful, as you all know. But he really inspired me in my youth and I guess inspiring people you know they always fit our own values so the values he was fighting for are somehow also the values I am fighting for if I admire people or if I think boy he's a good lad you know and he's doing a good job I admire what he's going for I admire his values I admire the way he tries to bring it to the ground uh, and that really inspires me. Yep. Huh? Okay, okay. Yeah, sometimes, you know, as you mentioned youth, uh, I will uh, uh, tell you that sometimes we are learning so many things from our kids. If they are doing something, you know, they, they're, they're doing or, or leading a small group, for example, is there any birthday party and, and you instruct any one kid, you are going to, uh, you know, game. Uh, exactly. Plan. So he was like, okay, this is a responsibility and he's doing with so much with leadership skill that he should be, he should invite every kid in a game area and doing with so much interest and, you know, entertaining. Yes, you're right. You're absolutely right. <laughs> okay. Yes, Jessica, what's your take on this? Okay. If I have to talk about people that I admire as leaders, not as inspirational, I would like to mention three people. The first one is... The two first ones are women. The first one is Louise Hay. Louise Hay is a well-known inspirational person who wrote a few books and uh, I mentioned her not because of that. No, <laughs> I mentioned her because she took something that nobody else wanted to take on, 
which was the gay community AIDS, HIV, back on her time, and she became a leader for them. She decided to help that community, which was being ostracized by the rest of humanity in general, and she was daring, strong, and brave enough to become a leader for them. And uh, just the mere fact of doing that, going against what everybody else was saying, in my opinion, deserves to be admired because it's very easy to go with everybody else. It's much more difficult to go against what the great majority believes and says and become a leader to minorities. So in that sense, she's a role model in my opinion. The second one that I want to mention is Jarlinda Ardner, the, 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 the Jacinda Ardent, let's see if I pronounce it right. She surprised the world when she said she was retiring from politics because she was suffering from burnout. Well, I think this is a true proof of integrity, what we were talking about before. And I think that uh, deserves admiration. You know, when you're occupying a very, very high position in your country and you decide to give it up because you suffer from burnout instead of going to doctors and professionals in a more or less hidden way, but you publicly acknowledge, I have a problem and this is why I am doing this. I think that also deserves admiration and is something that is leading through example. The last person I want to mention is my husband. I know you don't know my husband, <laughs> but let me just tell you why I admire my husband. He's been a leader in uh, multinational companies his whole life. And what I admire about him is a little bit similar to what I just said about Reese Hay. He is what we would, what some would call a soft leader. I'd rather call him a human leader. He really has led his people through knowing and understanding them and knowing and understanding himself. He has always led people based on what the company needed, but through what the people were. He told them what they needed that they didn't have and how to get it so they would reach their goals and their objectives. And he did it in a way that was not hardcore and we have to get goals and we have to get this and we have to get that. No, it was much more through, okay, let's get to our goal together. And he supported his people in a way that was not uh, destructive, critical or negative. Because I find that many company leaders lead in a very critical way. They criticize a lot because we've been taught that we learn from our mistakes and thus many leaders highlight our mistakes. You do this wrong, you do this wrong, you do this wrong. And they tell us everything we do wrong so we can do it right. Huh? Well, there's another way. <laughs> Something that we also teach in humanology, which is, okay, build on what you do well so you can do it excellent. And I think that my husband has been leading others from that perspective his whole professional career. And I truly, deeply admire him for that. And I will keep quiet now. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. Uh, okay, now I might have the next question, but after that, uh, we have some questions from audience. So uh, I need short and sweet answers <laughs> uh, because we are running out of time, especially with Jessica. Okay, so... Uh, uh, for the panel uh, discussion, my third and last question would be, as uh, already Marina mentioned about the challenges and problems we are facing when we are, you know, leading in, uh, on, on field work, especially. So what is the worst obstacle a person can have when trying to become a leader? Because it's very diff sometimes in different situations, if you're leading people or you're in sometimes, you are not a leader, but you have to be lead. Because it's so, there, there should be somebody you know, who have to take a decision. So, and some, most of the time, people are not accepting you in that role. They said, because everybody wants to become a leader, but everybody can't. 
So, what do you think, Marina? Uh, yeah, uh, my leadership here in this country is very heavy. The weight is very heavy sometimes. Uh, but I, I have uh, always, I'm with the hope, the, the hope hold me with the positive changes what we brought. Uh, otherwise, I, um, yeah, the worst obstacle uh, a person can have uh, when trying to become leader here is this in this country is, um, yeah, we are obstacle actually. As I said, um, the trees hold, or I don't know, because I speak better Dutch than English <laughs> or Macedonian. So, um, even English, no, not we are my native language. Yes, it's all okay. okay. <laughs> and um, so, yeah, it's um, the, 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 the biggest obstacle uh, sometimes or are politics, corruption, threats, justice, human rights, freedom of speech, um, and um, uh, loss of uh, people for more power than leadership. <laughs> and, um, and we are standing on the way actually to those people. Uh, They're not all like that, but uh, a lot of part they are and uh so the the worst thing let's say i can take just uh yeah two examples uh the last time when we had the human rights month uh i mentioned because we we are very from one side we are very rich country in uh like uh, uh gold and marble and granite and everything what you want actually from water still hills and, and so on and um we have very um uh, cheap working power here and um we have um actually we are all the time threatened with we we call them the mines of death uh because their companies uh they want to work with uh, for gold actually and um and that's actually um if they work with cyanide then it's that's actually cancer so in a few decades we we won't uh, have people so that's uh, one of the thing and uh the worst thing is when i was contacted from a link from that uh, company because that's huge you can imagine if they work with gold so yeah and that's one thing and uh, another thing is also when uh, I mentioned the last time, we we're also brought into court uh, from a company because uh, for our freedom of speech, actually, because the 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 uh, uh, right uh, for NGO actually is to inform the people is the is the like kind of guard dog who keeps guard to the people, to, to their territory. And uh, the thing was about uh, bringing uh, garbage from uh, third countries. And uh, now we said actually what our mayor has said from the municipality, uh, we brought the news on our page, what he has been said, but actually we were brought into court because it was said from him is the same company which wanted to bring garbage from another uh, countries and later with the same director and another registered company Macedonian later so those were the words and people actually needed and two um, uh, people who commented actually on the posts uh, they were also brought into court uh, I guess now because they uh, they had letters now we won in two courts um, but um, the winning is a good thing, but the goal, what they wanted to reach, to shut up <laughs> the people, not to speak, they reached their goal. So, um, and I was contacted also to uh, meet them in person. So I can meet anyone in person and have coffee with anybody because that's, that's me, but... <laughs> Uh, with this company, I asked, do you want to meet me as president or as citizen? Because as citizen, I can go with anyone for coffee. But So these are the worst things, actually, that you know what you're dealing with. And you need to dare uh, 
and to stand and to speak. And we even made uh, barricades uh, on the city, how we will fight for our city and for safety for the, our environment and so on. So, um, yeah, so that what are we, what we uh, deal most of the time here. And um, yeah, those are a few things from the worst uh, thing as okay. leader. Point taken, point taken. Yes, as a community and social leader, I believe that playing field is quite difficult uh, regarding permission, yep. taking this on spot decisions. We cannot take it. Uh, so thank you so much, Marina. So yeah. now, uh, same question to Mr. Thomas. Uh, you are a business leader, right? Coach, mentor, uh, of course, uh, uh, you're the teacher also, direct interaction with youth. So you have definitely different kind of hurdles and obstacles while leading up <laughs> young I people. Make it very, uh, I make it very short, you know, and they bring it down <laughs> on the personal level. Right? And short, yes. I will bring <laughs> it in short answer, yes. Uh, so I bring it down on the personal level. If you don't like people, let it be. <laughs> don't lead. Huh? Uh, if you're soft leading, let it be. Uh -huh. uh, if you are a specialist and you don't like working in teams, mm. let it be. Um, and if you do it for the power only, let it be as well. So that's Absolutely. probably are the, the main obstacles on the personal level. On my opinion. But the, you just shot the, uh, you know, everything by the tool uh, gun of, you know, flexibility. Let it be, let it be, let it be, right? <laughs> Flexible, yeah. <laughs> okay, yes, Jessica. Okay, I think I would somehow use what Thomas just said. Yeah, let mm -hmm. it be. So, in my opinion, the greatest obstacle is not knowing when you don't know and trying to offer others something that you may not have. So I think it's important that once again, we'll go back to what Thomas said at the beginning, that you know who you are, so you know what you can really share with others. Don't try to lead there where you have never been, because that's going to be very hard. Okay. Thank you. Okay, now uh, we have some questions from the audience. So I need, uh, again, a precise question because we have only 10 minutes left. So two to three minutes, I think, would be enough for every speaker. Um, the question was that, uh, can a leader be a loser? I don't mind to be a loser sometimes because failure are, are the very good lessons, actually. This is my perspective. But starting from Thomas, what do you think? Can a leader be a loser? Sure. <laughs> I don't know who's a loser. I don't know how, how people define a loser. I don't know, but a loser is somebody uh, who uh, had had bad luck in life. Actually, uh, in Switzerland, this is quite a, a thing. If, if you have bad luck and you maybe bring your company down, uh, you mm -hmm. don't normally get the second chance. In mm -hmm. the States, as example, it's the upside down. You know, if you if you don't have two or three companies uh, that you had to leave. Uh, or if you really broke down once and you put it yourself up again, um, that's a, a real strength. But so my answer is clear. Yes, a leader can be a leader. He shouldn't be a leader all the time. He shouldn't be a loser all the time. He can be a loser, right? Oh, yes. Yeah. From time to time, uh, why not? If he especially when, when mistake, you're in, in any organization uh, kind of multinational. We all have, we, we learn more through our mistakes yes. than do have so sometimes we lose it, definitely. I was okay. sometimes. Point taken, point taken. Anybody else want to answer or I should go to the next question? Marina or Jessica, any, any answer? Yes, Jessica. Yeah, I think that uh, people sometimes expect leaders to be pristine and perfect. And that is wrong as well. You can be a loser in the field and fantastic at something else mm -hmm. and that doesn't make you bad so yeah. sometimes people th think well you know he failed in um, businesses and then he cannot be a leader well i'm thinking about walt disney who failed mm -hmm. and went bankrupt a hundred thousand times and it's still time. built everything he built. yeah mm -hmm. he went over 300 banks to ask for a loan to build the first Disneyland in California. And 
he was he was said no many times because he was so unique, so different, so strange, and also because he'd been bankrupt before. And now look at Disney, one of the biggest companies in the world. So being a loser doesn't mean that you're bad at everything. It might be that you're not good at something, but you're fantastically great, great at something else. So being a loser doesn't necessarily mean you cannot be a leader, not at all. Yes. And failing is just an event, not a person. So you can change it. You're only, you're only a loser if you don't stand up again. You're a loser if you're not accepting your failure and you're not yeah. heading to exactly. make it. Exactly. If you don't take your learning. Exactly. Okay, uh, so my next question is, okay, the last question actually for this session, because we are running out of time. Uh, how do you distinguish a manager from a leader? <laughs> <laughs> a manager, I think manager who do, uh, a good manager doesn't do anything, but everything is happening around. A good manager. Two different, two different kinds of, of people, you know? Uh, yeah. The easiest way to answer is a manager is handling with numbers and the leader is handling people. Wow. Very yes, I, I disagree, Thomas. <laughs> no. uh, <laughs> Let's oh, this. Yeah, I think that everyone, as I said in my presentation, should aim at becoming a leader in whatever it is that they do so they can lead others. And I think that managers also lead others and should do so because managers usually manage other people as well. So the better leaders managers can become, the better they will be at managing. And I'm okay with that. Yeah, and one thing is not incompatible with the other one. So if you're a manager who shies away from leading, just be trained on leadership techniques. Learn about leading and become the best you can be at, as a manager, and then maybe you can become a leader as well. I think they should go hand in hand. And as I said at the beginning, it's important that we become leaders at whatever it is that we do. And there's nothing yeah. small enough, and there's nothing unimportant enough in the world that you cannot be a leader in. Maybe we can turn it this way as well, you know? A uh, good manager should be a good leader as well. Yeah. A good leader don't have to be a good manager. Well, I would say that manager can manage multiple leaders. <laughs> I, I would, I would say that we are all a bit of everything too. So <laughs> right now, as, as a manager and a moderator, I'm leading three very powerful leaders right now. <laughs> so the ship is in my control. So this, this is a man. Right now, I'm the manager. Right? Okay. So this is a difference between a manager and a leader. That manager, I think right now ahead upper hand right in, in different scenarios right okay this is this is on the lighter note uh, okay marina you, you do you want to say anything yes. no i it was just a great pleasure to be with you and i hope that uh, we can meet another time uh, again okay. because yeah it was just amazing the rush what I had before I came here, actually, it was uh, worth it. Uh, thank you, Thomas. And I didn't met you because you had problems with uh, with the sound and things. And uh, thank you. And nice to meet you. Nice to meet you also, uh, Javira and uh, and Jessica. Was it's, it's always a pleasure to see you and to mm -hmm. be present. Thank you, Mary. Yeah, thank you so much. So overall, uh, I, I, I like the quotes actually so much about the leadership, that a leader is the one who knows the way, goes the way, and shows the way, actually. Uh, so by uh, John Maxwell, of course. So I uh, thank you so much, uh, uh, Ms. Jessica, Marina, Thomas, uh, for wonderful thoughts, uh, opinions uh, regarding the importance of leadership. And we need leaders and we need skilled leaders and mentioned by Jessica. Uh, don't, don't stop learning. Upgrade yourself. Uh, uh, strength your, uh, you know, polish your strengths. Work on your strengths. Uh, so thank you so much. So next month, we will be back with the third uh, episode of Human Conversation Session Season uh, on 13th of March, right? And our topic would be the good old past.
Wow, wonderful topic. I just got to know right now. So definitely Jessica will bring uh, amazing panels, uh, panelists with us as always. So thank you so much once again. It's worth, it you. was wonderful meeting you all. Uh, and uh, yes, as Marina mentioned, maybe in another episode, we will meet together uh, again. Thank you so much. Yeah. This is Javelia signing out from Human Conversation. Bye-bye and good night. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Good night. Bye. Take care. Good night. Bye. Bye.